Oh my God, the cats are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Show us the fight. Gatsby instigates all these fights and then the killers are always like, dude, I'm like three times your size. It's not gonna end well for you. I'm Hannah Kaiser and this is The Bandwagon. Last week, we bandwagoned the Padres, and they have continued to be so emphatically not cursed that I am humbled by my lack of preternatural prowess. And also, we would have a problem if this was another normal team episode because it literally wouldn't make sense to bandwagon any team that didn't just hit five grand slams in a week. Fortunately, though, we're doing something a little bit different this week. Even though you wouldn't know it from the fact that the Cardinals have only played 20 games or from the way that MLB is still changing rules on the fly, or conversely, from looking at a calendar and noticing it's about to be Labor Day, we're actually just <laughs> about at the halfway point in the season. I know, how can that be? It's both barely started and yet somehow almost over. Along with all of the small joys that break up the slog of everyday life and also underwire bras, all-stars are not a thing this year. But I still picked my all-star team. This is for the all-star game that's not happening, which hopefully means it'll be worth millions of dollars in the future. <laughs> First up, behind the plate is the reigning best catcher in baseball, JT Realmuto. There are tons of stats to back that up but I'm not sure any of them speak quite as loudly as the Fandemic crew. That's a P, H, and a K outside of Citizens Bank Park screaming sign JT, or the billboard truck that says sign JT driving around the stadium, or the pizza sent to Bryce Harper that said sign JT, or Bryce Harper himself who yelled sign him after JT hit a grand slam. And sign JT. Game. Sign him. At first base, Luke Voigt, the beefiest lad in a lineup full of dingers, smashing tree trunk sized men. <laughs> Always imagine him doing the Steve Holt thing from Arrested <laughs> Development, only he says Luke Voigt. At second, the least famous of the famous baby Blue Jays, Kevin Biggio, who is really good in a nerdy sort of boring way. He's got baseball's Nerds. lowest chase rate. He beats the shift. He's like the serious one in a 90s boy band, you know, like a heartthrob for sapiosexuals. <laughs> Does no one know what sapiosexual means? Not a single Attracted idea. Attracted to your brain. Thank you. At third base is Matt Chapman, who has won the AL Platinum Glove for best overall defense every year that he has played a full season, which admittedly is only two seasons. I think that he is the baseball player who experiences the biggest glow up when he puts on eye black. Glow it's just up. like a very classic sort of retro look for him that accentuates his bone structure and downplays the fact that he's kind of got a case of the boyish old man face. He looks like one of those early 20th century photos of 14 year olds who've seen some You'd think that we'd have gone with someone we didn't just dedicate basically an entire episode to for my all-star shortstop, but first of all, anyone other than Fernando Tatis Jr. would be incorrect in this position. And second of all, we focused entirely on his offensive production last week, and then he went and did this. A year after not cracking the Orioles opening day roster, Mike Yastrzemski leads all of baseball in wins above replacement for the Giants. He spent most of his 20s shuttling around the minors. Seriously, does not a good look for the Orioles that might be, <laughs> that they didn't ever put Mike Yastrzemski on a major league roster, and now he's the best player in baseball. A lesser man might have let the weight of a thousand think pieces decrying Boston dealing him to the Dodgers get in his head, but Mookie Betts has made his permanent home into even more of a powerhouse than it was before. Some highlights, his sixth career three homework game, putting him atop the stupid stat cool leaderboard at 27 years old, <laughs> and this throw across basically the widest part of a baseball field with perfect accuracy. And I've watched this like 17 times and I'm pretty sure he didn't even stop to aim. <laughs> also, just go ahead and pre-write those off-season stories reckoning with whether or not Charlie Blackman's 400 season really fits into history. Picking a single starting pitcher is tough, but I am pretty sure we will not be bandwagoning the Astros anytime soon. And so no. just gotta take any chance I get to talk about the Ephus throwing, behind the mound sitting, beats you to the punchline by calling out his next pitch out loud, Zach Greinke. I'm sure he is ambivalent at best about the honor. And Nelson Cruz is our DH because I honestly can't think of a stronger testament to anyone's character than this story about how his boss and coworkers were genuinely saddened that coronavirus protocols would keep the 40 year old sluggers entourage from hanging out around the clubhouse this season. Everybody was like, oh, that's really sad for him. Imagine if that was like entourage, the movie entourage. If like anytime people had, he had to go anywhere without his entourage, people were like, we really miss Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> team and I'm sure that everyone disagrees entirely because we did not pick players from every team. We don't care. <laughs> we don't care who you're a fan of. Anyway, let's do fan not a fan. Header on the base pass. Cole Calhoun headed the ball. Was it he was in a rundown? 
Yeah. Okay, they think he interfered and they think he did this on purpose because the as rules as written say that if you get hit by a ball on the base pass and it isn't interference, you're not out. And so he probably did interfere and they called him out. If you don't want guys to interfere, you should just make it so that way you can peg guys and they're out. <laughs> <laughs> if you could get guys out by throwing the ball at them, would fielders do this or would they not do this? Like any time a fielder like airs a throw and the guy doesn't catch it, chaos ensues. It's not like good for the defense <laughs> to be throwing the ball at the offense. Pitcher throws it at 110 miles an hour and just <laughs> knocks some dude in the head. <laughs> You're right, this Damn. is a bad take. <laughs> after, after a few more minutes of consideration, I, I rescind my rule change. <laughs> I watched it, I think it was interference. I think he was intentionally interfering, hoping that they wouldn't call interference. And if that had worked, it would have been amazing. Fan, I, I like rundowns, particularly rundowns in which guys end up not being out. Like, are, any rundown in which a guy ends up safe is a fantastic highlight, and so this didn't work because he got called out on the interference. But if it had worked, it would have been very cool. Yeah. Rookie cards. Mike Trout's rookie cards set some record for being expensive. It was sold for 3.9 million. Doesn't, I could draw you a Mike Trout card and say there's only one in the world of them. Please pay me $4 million. Do it. Baseball cards are dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you own this Mike Trout card, I don't think like how cool that you own this Mike Trout card. I just think you have millions of dollars and you chose not to like dedicate it to charity. You're the sucker for spending that money on something that was only made for the sake of appreciation. You don't even get gum. It doesn't have any value. Don't fall for that. You're a sucker. Not a fan. The Batman. Is there a new one? Yeah, Robert Pattinson's playing him. I won't say that. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> Superhero movies are dumb. I'm sorry. You know he's gonna win. Superheroes are essentially an argument for like social services that we vote on and that are subject to like review boards are not good for weeding out criminals. It would be better if we were just like, yeah, sure, use whatever force you want against bad guys. That's a bad message. People sort of being like, I take it upon myself to decide the level of force that this situation needs is not a recipe for a safer city. Not a fan of that. KFC ditching their slogan. KFC after 64 years is getting rid of finger licking good because it's not COVID compliant with uh, washing your hands. <laughs> You're not supposed to lick other people's fingers. <laughs> if you wear a mask, you can lick whatever the f you want when you're home alone. <laughs> the level of panic we had in the early days of the pandemic around sort of like you can't touch doorknobs and you can't lick your fingers when you're home alone eating fried chicken. Like, we, we, we now know what works and what doesn't work. You don't need to not lick your fingers when you're home alone. You just need to wear a mask in public places and not gather with your friends and not make out with four different people in a row. So within, yeah, not a fan of them changing their slogan because it, it, it muddles the message around uh, coronavirus containment. Unfortunately, bandwagon all-stars is not yet a designation recognized by baseball reference. And so if they're going to play a season, however short, and crown a champion in a bubble or otherwise, MLB should also name actual All-Stars for 2020. I do not mean that they should bring a bunch of people together from around the country and put them in a locker room for an exhibition game. And I understand that the 30-game midway point is probably too soon to start handing out accolades. But at the end of the season, even if 60 games is fewer than the first half in a normal year, all the best players should be recognized as such. Because these things do matter. Often contracts include incentives for awards, and having your best year coincide with the cancellation of the Midsummer Classic could cost a guy many thousands of dollars. And beyond that, baseball's whole internal mythology relies on things like records and honorifics, and Mike Trout deserves an unbroken streak of little tiny stars next to the seasons on his stat page. There's nothing that can make this summer normal, certainly not sports. But we have the language to make someone's success this year live alongside the rest of baseball's story history. We can call him an all-star. Give the people what they want. So that was our all-star episode. This is a very small sample size from which we are choosing all-stars. It is sort of funny how, because the trade deadline is coming up and because we're basically into the stretch run and the postseason is around the corner, it feels like these seasons are locked in stone and they are extremely, extremely not. All the time, every morning I wake up and I look at the standings and I'm like, who's out of the running? And honestly, nobody, only the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bucks.